In this bite-sized tutorial, we are going to create a nice maintainable command line interface for a Python program in just a few lines. Let's code! Hi, I'm Rafael and this is CoderCave. If you're interested in software development, consider subscribing to this channel. In this tutorial, we are going to use Click to create a command line interface around a Python program. This is useful for those quick and dirty tools that you want to quickly get to work. Uh, you don't need them to be rock solid, but they still need to get arguments. So instead of using sys.argv, we are going to use click. In this tutorial, we will first create a simple command, then we will explore a command group, and then we will see how to invoke a command without passing the command name. Let's get into it. So the very first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a virtual environment. Once the virtual environment is ready, I will install click. All right, now that click has been installed, let's move to our code editor. So the very first thing here is to import click. Now, this is going to be in a hello world kind of uh, application. So let's add some scaffolding code. Okay, now let's create this uh, salute me. Salute me is going to be our hello world command. Um, we want to invoke that through command line. So the method will obviously receive the name and it's going to print salute, uh, hello world or hello name. So it's going to be an F string. All right, so we want name to be parametric and to be coming from the command line. So very simply, we just decorate this method with click command. And then we need to define a, a click option. The option will be dash dash name. We can define a default, which is going to be, <laughs> you guessed it, world. And then we can also define a help text. So the help text will show in the uh, command line when we, uh, when we invoke the program with dash dash help. All right, so here we have everything we need. Let's switch back to the command line and let's invoke this program. And here, by default, we have hello world. But what if we say hello name caveman? Hello caveman. All right, so this is a very simple, a very simple command. You can't go simpler than that. And you probably noticed that this is even, this is already easier than using sys.argv to get your uh, uh, your parameters into your code. Let's step up the game a little bit. Let's explore the command groups. So let's imagine that we are creating this program to check in someone in a hotel. So first we salute them and then we check them in. So let's code the check-in method. So the check-in takes the room in which we want to check in the, the guest. So we say print um, so it's going to be an F string, you're staying uh, at room, and then we say room, the room that was passed as an argument. All right, so nothing special there. And this is this check-in is going to be a command. So we decorate that again with click command and an option. Okay, so basic scaffolding for this method is there, but we need to make some structural changes. So now uh, we want the check-in method to be a sub-command of salute me. So command becomes a group, and then we need to add check-in to salute me. So salute me dot add command. That's how you add the command and then just check in. So now the hierarchy is defined. There are a couple of things I need to add. So I want to have a context 
uh, going around so that I can uh, I can use the parameter from salute me in the method of in the check in. So I will add it here as well. So pass context. So to manipulate the context, I have to get in uh, a parameter uh, in the first place. I will call it CTX. So here, when uh, when I call um, this program uh, all the way to check in, um, I will capture the name, but the name will not be passed in the check in. Uh, and the way to get it over here would be to copy this parameter, but I don't want to copy this whole thing. It's a bad practice. So I'm going to use the context. So in the context, I know that the parameters are in a dictionary called uh, params. So the name will be ctx params and it will be called name because name is the name of the parameter all the way here. So instead of saying you are staying at room, we will address the guest by name. So name, you are staying at room something. All right. So with that done, let's give it a try. And uh, check in will be not check uh, underscore in, but check dash in. And the room, I want room one, two, three. Let's try. Boom. All right. So there is a mistake, obviously, in the code. And uh, the problem here is that I'm referencing the I'm referencing the wrong context. So let's go back into the code. So instead of context.params, I have to do context.parent.params. So this is going to get the context of the, um, the parent command. So let's try again. Let's go back to the command line. And, and now it works. So the first step is to salute caveman and then caveman you are staying at room one two three so the parameter passing is working as expected as a last step in this tutorial let's explore a default execution let's say that we want to invoke our code without parameters and we want it to do something if we do a uh, my code without parameters we are greeted with the help text, which is a very useful feature, but that's not exactly what uh, we want. Let's say we, we want the salutation to happen by default. So with the code structured like that, uh, this is not going to be possible or almost. We only need to do one simple change to the code to support that, which is uh, going into the group and say uh, invoke without uh, command. We set that to true. So once this is done, we can go back to the command line. And when we invoke it like that, it will use the default name. So if I say uh, name caveman, in this case, it's going to salute me correctly. If this tutorial was helpful, hit like and subscribe. And there you have it, just a few lines of code to step up the game of your command line tools. This is much better than sysargv, it's clearer, self-documented and a lot more maintainable.